Oh, my was, hi, how yeah. are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Wow. You look I'm good really with your great. space here. Huh? I'm doing really great. Oh, you're doing great with that. Yeah, I can see that. You know what? Um, I'm so excited to meet you. And I got more excited when <laughs> I posted something about your contest. I know it's not yet official. Um, it's not yet confirmed by the Miss Universe Organization, but... <laughs> There's, there are, um, they already leak <laughs> a certain pageant site already leaked the hotel and telecast details mm -hmm. of your pageant. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. Um, how are you feeling right now? You know, you know, why am I so excited considering that I have no plans of going to Israel? Because, you know, when I check out the flights mm -hmm. from here in Manila going to Tel Aviv, <laughs> it's so expensive. There's no direct flight. It's expensive for us too. It's really expensive because we're from we're on Curacao, so we have to do a layover in the Netherlands in Europe and then go to Israel. Yes. Like, it's are crazy expensive. But um thank God it's arranged for, for me. It's too bad if you can't go. No, I know, I know, but I'll just probably content myself seeing all the updates here on social media. How how has your preparations been going in terms of training? in terms of your paperwork, documentation, in order for you to have a smooth flight going to Israel? Um, well, I have a European, I have a passport of the European Union. Um, we all have a, a passport of the Netherlands here, so we don't have to request a visa, so everything can go very smooth. I just have to take a booster shot, because my last shot was in May 2021, so in May, and it's already been, um, when, when once I entered Israel, it's already been um, six months, so um, I'm just oh. gonna So that's, that's apart shot. from getting fully vaccinated? Yes, yes. Ooh. I already got my two shots. Um, the times so are really, the times shot. are in right now, wow. Yes, yes, so it's now really we have... but you know, I, Honestly, I don't care. I just want to get there. Um, I'm excited to get there. And I know that the Miss Universe organization is really responsible. They will keep us safe and they do everything um, required in order to keep us safe. But um, next to that, the preparations for um, my public speaking are going well. I have two amazing teachers. Um, my public, my, my catwalk is also really great. Jonelle, I don't know if you know Jonelle is working me and of course you know lots of exercise lots of um training squats in order to be in the best shape at miss universe yes i i, I saw that from your ig stories last night where you know you were training with your catwalk trainer wow mm -hmm. we can't wait to see the whole of that come december right so um there's no doubt that, you know, there's so much riding in your candidacy right now. For sure, you know the fact that Curacao has been doing well, has been on a winning streak in Miss Universe. It started out in 2018, where your candidate finished in top 10. And then uh, last year, when Chantal also made it to top 20, and now it's going to be you. So... Have you been, you know, seeking the advice of your predecessors about your upcoming competition? And what have they been telling you? Or what advice have that they tell you that you are taking to heart seriously? Mm -hmm. Well, I've been speaking to Chantal. I spoke to Chantal and um, Akisha from 2018, Miss 2018. He's my mentor. Um, so we've been talking a lot with each other. She's been mentally preparing me for Miss Universe. Um, sometimes we go to lunch together and she really gives me valuable tips. But the number one tip that she gave me is that, you know, there can be so many countries, powerhouse countries, with big sash factors, but no one is you. And that is your strength. Um, there's only one Shariangela. There's only one person that can bring the intellect the, the resilience and determination that you have from Curacao. Um, so that is one of the most amazing advice, one of the most amazing tips that anyone has ever given me. So uh, that's what she said, and I will remember that forever. Yes, and you know, you, for sure, you have been being prepped by your organization. You know, I really love the fact that they have been choosing the right girls for the organization. and. You know, when I read your bio, I was like stunned. So I was 
really stunned by your accomplishments. Like, whoa, another well accomplished woman coming from Thank here you. now. So, for the benefit of our viewer, from of my viewers who are not yet familiar with you, can you give a little bit of introduction about yourself in terms of hobbies, your hobbies, top talent, background, and your course in school? Um, okay, well, I uh, was born in the Netherlands. I did high school here in Curacao. And um, I, when I finished high school, I graduated. I, got, I, got, I went back to the Netherlands to study law. I have my law degree. And I'm right now, I'm finalizing my master's thesis on corporate law in order to get my master's. And I also work full-time as a legal officer at a corporate service provider. So that is what I do in the daily life. <laughs> Next to being a beauty queen, I also work full time. Um, but my hobbies, you know, I have different hobbies. I like watching movies, superhero movies, going to the beach. We have the most beautiful beaches here on Curacao. And um, what I love doing is when I have a moment off, I just love walking in the city center. Our city center is so beautiful. It's so authentic. And um, the stories that my grandmother always told me and um, I've listened with lots of intent and really you know with, with care and I know that the same bricks that she walked on I also walk on and that's kind of like a really beautiful thought so that's what I love doing just to keep me grounded a little bit. How's the city center over there so far? Are you guys back to normal? Um, we're not completely back to normal we're not in lockdown thank god uh, we do have a curfew from 1 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. So life has gotten slowly but surely back to normal. And I think that our government has handled um, the COVID situation with utmost care. And that's why we are, we're now free to do almost everything that we want to do. And um, they're still keeping a close eye on the cases, but we're doing really well. You know, you know one thing when I was researching about you, when I was... Um reading about you when I was um, checking about your stats and facts mm -hmm. I, I realized uh, I, I kind of figured oh, why does she study in Netherlands because University of Linden I don't know how you pronounce it Thank but you, then yeah. I realized okay I spoke to Chantal before and she also has a Dutch background oh was um, was um, was Curacao once a colony of uh, Dutch before and I googled about it oh yeah oh nice <laughs> <laughs> So you did a little research, you know. Nice. Yes, we're yeah, still in the kingdom. Yeah. We're, we're autonomous, but we still have, um, you know, we're allies of the Netherlands. So we still have yes. the passport, and um, some kids go to school there, go to university, and um, you know, so so we, we have good ties with the Netherlands. You know, I, I really envy Netherlands right now because they're considered a green country. So if you're going to go there. In other countries like Poland, you won't be needing help. You won't be having to quarantine yourself for mm -hmm. yes. almost a week <laughs> after arriving back to your country. So I'm just waiting for every for everything to go back to finally travel again. So, uh, I hope anyway, so. I hope very soon. I hope really soon. Yes, yes. Are you excited to? What are you look? What are you looking most forward to going to Israel soon? Um, well, Israel, I, I really want to soak up the culture and the buildings, so that that's really interesting. But with regards to this universe, I just want to enjoy every minute of it. I'm so it's you know it's been a lifelong dream um, to participate for this universe. So I, I I don't I can't pinpoint what part I love the most. I'm just going to sit, soak it all up and enjoy every every second. I know how you feel for sure. Uh, is, your, is Miss Universe Curacao your first ever pageant? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So what did it take you so long to join a pageant like Miss Universe Curacao, even if it's already your lifelong dream to compete? What took you so long? Well, um, when I was 11 years old, uh, my aunt became Miss Curacao. So she went to Miss Universe before me. Yes. Oh. And, uh, yes. What's her name? Licha Kiana Kofi. She uh, participated the year that Natalie Glebova won. Oh, that explains why. That explains yes. that, that special connection that you both yes. had during your interview with yes. her. Yes, so we have uh, you know, that, that bond. And um, 
ever since that moment in time, I wanted to become um, Miss Universe Curacao, but I didn't want to go at it the route that the most girls go, you know, go to lots of different pageants, but I really wanted to gain life experience. I wanted to gain knowledge, um, have some failures, some successes along the way that will build my resume, resume because I early on I found out that Miss Universe, it's a job. And um, you have to have a good resume in order to back it, back that up in order to get that job. So um, I studied, I opened a business in the Netherlands. And every year I studied, studied Miss Universe really intently. You know, all the details, watching and learning. And what I thought, and I didn't find myself to be ready in order to participate from Miss Universe Curacao. I wanted to have, I wanted to be able to give the highest expression of myself, you know? So um, that's um, why when I was 26, I decided to participate. But, you know, COVID came along. So <laughs> after one and a half years, our pageant was held. So I was 26 when I first entered, and I was 28 when I was crowned. So I'm currently 28 years old. Ooh. You made it uh, just at the nick of time. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm curious to ask, um, which uh, edition of Miss Universe that really, you know, bewitched you, that made you say that, oh, I want to be like her. I want to mm -hmm. be like her and do a I lot must, of great things. I must say, Diana Mendoza really made a big impact on me with her yellow dress and her blue earrings. Yeah. I loved her from the start. I was totally obsessed with her, totally obsessed with Diana Mendoza, really, really. Um, but I think the Miss Universe that I loved seeing the most was in Thailand when Akisha participated. Such a it was such a beautiful pageant. And the contenders was, were so strong. You know, you have Catriona and Tamara and Stephanie Gutierrez. They were all, you know, those, the, the, that top three was mesmerizing. So I think that... Yeah. that 18 is my favorite Miss Universe, but the Miss Universe that really made an impact on me um, with regard to looks especially was Diana Mendoza. And I must say, Zosie Bini really opened, I think, the world's eyes and made the world realize that beauty patterns are not just beauty, but we also speak up for, for causes that are important to us. Well, that's nice that you brought it up. Yeah, you know, I love, I love the fact that, you know, pageants are really evolving for the better. So as you go through your reign right now, what sort of messages have you been getting from your audience about your win? Well, um, I must say I have gotten so many amazing and positive comments. It really struck a nerve with me because I didn't, you know, I, I was fairly unknown um, entering the pageant. As I, as I said before, I didn't participate in previous pageants. I was just focused on my studies and gaining that life experience. So people didn't really know me, but um, looking back, the pageant was also being, um, was also on Facebook, live on Facebook, and seeing those comments and seeing people's messages, messaging me, yes, I was totally for you. You rocked that stage. You're doing so well. And actually, people were filming each other when the, when the announcement came that I crowned. And they were jumping up and down. The strangers were jumping up and down um, of joy that I won. And that's, I got so emotional seeing those videos because I'm just a stranger to them. But the fact that you know, pageants and, and sports unites, it unites people from all over um, Curacao and it's for the best and I, I love seeing that. So I only had amazing positive messages and um, that really warms my heart. Right, you know, yes. you've been opening yourself up to people and um, as I researched more about you, I never thought that you led quite a traumatic childhood. Yes, definitely. When you were three years old, can you share more yeah, about it? That people didn't know that um, of me because I always put on such a strong front. And um, when I was three years old, uh, hot boiling water fell all over me. So my body was burned for 80%. Um, my mom came home and um, she was... I went to the hospital. Um, the hospital didn't accept me. 
I had to go to the ICU in a different department, in a, a, burn, a sort of burning victims department. And I was there for months and months under 24-7 watch, monitors, medical equipment, you know, strapped to me. And a little kid, three years old, and um, I have a scar here and some of my back still from Ooh. that incident. And what, to me, I've, I've carried that for most of my life, you know, looking at the scar, looking at my body, but not really knowing what happened because, um, and I blamed myself because my mom always told me, you know, this happened, that happened, and it was so traumatic, and she didn't want to take any pictures. You know, she didn't want to see those pictures again of her, of her daughter, only child in bandages and strapped. But um, I blamed myself because I, you know, I didn't know exactly. My memories faded from that time. And once I did some research, slowly but surely, I understood that trauma, once you have trauma, your memories suppress, the trauma suppresses the memory. And um, that made sense for me. And things, you know, cleared up in my head. And um, from that moment on, I just thought, okay, you know, I went through this traumatic experience, but I got out of it. Um, my body healed. My body healed itself. My mother was a driving force in that. She remained strong and um, my resilience and my passion and my determination, I really feel that I have that from her because, you know, I've seen her. She's my great inspiration, my role model. And especially having gone through that as a mother, I couldn't imagine going through that as a mother it's it's so difficult to see your own oh. child there in the hospital so that those are the things you know and slowly but surely i realized no you know i am resilient look at what i've been through look at what my mom has been through but we got to the other side and we're okay we healed and now it's time to to pass on that resilience to other people oh Nice ending. So now that explains your scars are stories of yes. advocacy. Oh. Yes, because when I see it, you know, it's trauma, but it's also a history. And it's now I can say it's a beautiful history because it makes me appreciate my mom even more knowing that she went through such a difficult time, but still got out of it, you know, and she raised me a single mom. Um, I always had everything that I wanted. She was definitely a force to be reckoned with. And um, I have so much from her and her, her, trait, her traits, she really instilled in me that I could be anything I want to be. And um, hearing those stories and seeing, you know, hearing that, you know, she had to, when I got out of the hospital, she had to walk around with a child that was, you know, burnt. And people looked at me, you know, sweet. And, you know, things like that that she experienced, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine experiencing that with, with uh, my own future child. So she's really strong, and that is why um, I've been surrounded with beautiful, strong women my entire life. And that is mm. I am, like I am, you know. So, so no that explains your advocacy, yes. So... Yes, I now get your advocacy for Miss Universe. It really comes from personal experience. So for the benefit of our viewers, again, can you tell us more about it? Um, about, yeah, well, uh, my passion. That's why my passion in life is women's empowerment. Oh, my mom is commenting. <laughs> um, that's why I love women's empowerment. That's my passion because I was raised by a really strong woman. And um, I've always had strong women surrounding me. And I didn't realize it at that time because it was so normal. Yes. So um, it was so normal to me, you know, what, what you see, you become. That's what I always say. But I realized that most women and girls or a lot of women and girls don't have that energy, that positive energy surrounding them. And they do, they do not have women leaders that they can look up to. And they don't have the tools that that woman um, that woman 
you know, that the power woman can give them. Yes. So that's why um, on March 8th, that's why I began writing my book on women's empowerment. Um, it's called Release Your Amazon. And um, I wrote it because I wanted girls and women to have the same tools that I got. But I got it from my mom from looking at other women. So um, I wrote it all down in a book and I have it free online for everyone that wants to download it and um, that is why that's my passion because we all have to realize that we are all role models and not just uh, with regards to women's empowerment but you're a role role model you're a public figure I'm a public figure and we have to realize that we are currently setting the tone on the conversations that the next generation that is looking at us are having that are continuing and they are finishing those conversations, but we have to speak up and say something about it. And that is why I'm passionate about women's empowerment. That's why I'm speaking up because I know that somewhere, somewhere out there, even if it's only one little girl that is watching me, she will carry that torch and she will also speak up. Just like that, we can effectuate change. You know, I'm amazed by your story because, you know, it, it doesn't... I love the fact that you're not coming from that feeling of pittance. Yeah. So I was wondering, I, you know, I was, I'm wondering now, where did you get that drive and um, that sense of passion to help other people out considering your very traumatic experience? Um, why did I get that drive? I think it's, it was instilled in me by my mom also because she always, she loves helping people. Um, she always gives a lot of herself, sometimes a little bit too much. I always say to her, you know, <laughs> you should think about yourself. You should think of yourself once in a while, not just give, give, give. But I think that she instilled in me that passion um, to give and to, to, have compassion for other people. You know, I love the fact that we you're talking about we're talking about women empowerment, which is really like the core thing of Miss Universe. So what for you is the definition of women empowerment? For me the definition of women empowerment is that every and, and there are different definitions and every day I think, well that that's a good definition or that is a good definition. But I think that um <laughs> for me right now is being able to give women the inspiration that they need in order for them to aspire to be something great. Now, I want to give the inspiration, but they should aspire to become greater than they could ever imagine possible. And that to me is women's empowerment, giving women, the tools, showing them the leadership that is possible. And that is what I've gotten. That is why I'm so passionate and vocal about this, because I grew up watching a female prime minister here in Curacao, which is totally normal to have a like, female prime When I was a teenager, we had a female prime minister. So um, things like that. And, and now I realize I could also become a prime minister. Nothing is stopping me. Yes. You know, things like that, you know, it's yes. like the belief. If you see things, something, you can become it. It's the representation that truly matters. So that's you know, what empowerment is for me. True. Women is, are just as capable as men in achieving things in this world. All right? So I want to ask, having, having this said, do you, think, you know, the re, do you think the reason why we keep harping on women empowerment is because of gender inequality? still existing in our world right now? No, gender equality um, does not exist right now. Gender inequality, as you said, it exists. And um, indeed, that is why we keep harping because we realize and we see that women are still not, sometimes, not taken seriously. Um, they don't have a seat at the table, or if they have a seat at the table, it's maybe out of 10 managing directors there's only one female managing director and she is expected to keep quiet you know a, a yes, sort of yes. like a token a token put there okay we have one now everyone calm down 
but um, it isn't there. Gender equality is not there. And the World Economic Forum, I'm mind blown by this every time I say it because the World Economic Forum predicted that gender equality will be here in the year 2133. Oh. So, are we? so in, in 113 years, they predict that there is gender equality. And that is why we have to keep fighting for it. That's why we have to, we're going to have to continue to speak up about yes. this subject. You know, because, you know, I feel, I feel you because, you know, whenever I read studies and articles about it, you know, a lot of st studies have proven that, you know, once a woman leads a company, whether she's a CEO or, you know, has a high ranking position in the, in the, in the corporate sector, um, the workforce becomes more productive. Yes. Yes. Apart from diversity, if you put women uh, leading, the co leading all these companies, they become more productive. Yet, you know, women still experience double standard, yes. discrimination in the workplace. So, mm-hmm stereotypes yeah so yeah it's just so it's no matter how we portray women to have all these qualities that men usually have like you know being yes. strong like being you know um indifferent or just someone who's really uh work dedicated you know it still rubs off a lot of people in our society to the point that it's making them feel that only men should only, you know, possess all these attributes, right? So, it's I, I just feel it's, a difficult it's really difficult. So, topic. what for you, so my next question for you right now is, you know, despite all these um, bad gender bias about women, let's look at the positive. Mm -hmm. What are the qualities of an empowered woman for you? For me, I think an empowered woman has different qualities and um, I think the definition of an empowered woman is a woman that knows exactly what she wants to do and goes for it and achieves it so if she wants to be a housewife and take care of the kids that's really hard work that's also an yes. empowered woman if she wants to work full-time and have a nanny on the side that's also an empowered woman and if she chooses not to have kids and focus on her career, it's also an empowered woman. So I, I like think what you that, said. Yeah, I so like what you said, especially the last part. Like, you know, if I don't want to have kids, you know, I'm still empowered. So yes. um, can I ask something about it? So in general, how can women be more empowered while still maintaining their femininity? Um, I think that one doesn't exclude the other because um, why can't I be an empowered woman that speaks up, that knows exactly what she wants, that is strong and brave and fights for her goals. And also, you know, put on some high heels, put on makeup and, and you know, a beautiful dress. It's not, the, the one doesn't exclude the other. And I don't know uh, why people sometimes say that, that, oh, well, yeah. you're a feminist, so you can't have high heels or you can't, have on a sexy dress. For to me, it's not even a question. It's um, owning your sexuality and your femininity. And why? Why can't you? While fighting for your rights. That's nice. So, to fight for your rights, fight for women's rights. True. So, I, I'm just wondering. Not having listed down all those qualities, and we talk about femininity. You even host your own Amazon talks about it. So I'm curious to ask, are there any specific exercises or practices that you can offer to help women become more empowered? Okay, that's a good question. I have lots and lots of things that I <laughs> personally do. Um, I, I recommend every woman that doesn't really know what they want to do to download my book. It's free. It's on my site. Um, my link, it's in the link in bio. Download it and start reading because I'm talking about different things such as vision. You know, what is your vision? How to get to your vision? 
And once you get it, make your vision board, visualize it. And I've learned so many things along the way. Um, I listen to a lots and lots of podcasts that have helped me a great deal. Um, you know, once you have your vision, visualize it. And not just visualize the goal, but visualize the work that it takes to get there. Visualize, for me, visualize exercising, visualize walking on the runway every single day for hours practicing so to me it's about visualizing where you're going but also the journey of getting there um that's one of those things um with goal setting i have different tips on how to um really summarize what goal you want to achieve not too easy but not too hard don't make it too difficult on yourself just Choose a goal, say, okay, I want to run a marathon. But if you haven't exercised yet, you can't easily run a marathon in a week. No, you have to prepare. So say, I want to run a marathon in a year. And when you prepare that goal, okay, but if you have that goal, you can say, okay, take it with small steps and realize why, the purpose. You know, what is the purpose, the why? And once you have those two things, you can visualize the small steps on, you know, on doing what it takes in order to get there. Things like that. Um, but you can find it all in my book. I have uh, different things. I do lots of meditations also, um, affirmations. You know, say, I am powerful. I am strong. I am this universe. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, but I am... You know, so things like that in order to pump you up and give it your all in the morning. So, uh, yes, you know, those, those are those there are things. so many things that I can get from what you just said. You know, I feel like, wow, I can already imagine you saying those things once you're being interviewed in front of the preliminary judges or even if there's an opening statement segment in the competition. Like, yeah, you have, really have to be specific with your goals, right? So... I'm turning the tables to you right now. <laughs> what is your goal? Okay. And vision? Well, my short-term goal is to become Miss Universe. Um, but I always, you know, I have one main goal, but I also have different small goals. And um, of course, I want to become Miss Universe, but there are so many of us and only one can become Miss Universe. What's also important for me is that I represent Curacao to the best of my abilities. Because um, Curacao, we need all the attention we can get. We uh, need lots of tourists. So I will represent Curacao and I will talk about Curacao as much as possible in order to get the message through that we're one authentic, amazing island. Um, that is also another goal. But long term, I have many goals. I want to write a second book. Um, I'm currently busy with that. It's going to be a little bit more spiritual. Um, it's called Inhale, Exhale, Fight, and there are three parts in there, so I'm really focusing on that, writing a little bit in between all the trainings. Um, yeah, so those two, those, those three things are, are important for me right now, winning this universe with representing Curacao and making Curacao proud and um, finishing my second book. Oh, no words, you're really unstoppable. With, wow, wow, Curacao is really so, so proud to have you as its representative for the upcoming Miss Universe. So we're now, you know, we're, I'm now down to my last few questions. Before we end this interview, can I make a request? Can you like um, say your name and your country name for, for anything purposes? <laughs> Miss Universe is just right there on the corner. Okay, okay. <laughs> good, good. Shariangela Sancho, 28, Curacao! <laughs> oh, I didn't use clapping <laughs> Were those people clapping in the background? Yeah, that's right? so oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> yes, you know, we, I've been really having such a blast getting to know you, but unfortunately, I have to end now because yes. it's getting late over there. So, you know... There's no doubt that you will really do well in Miss Universe. I'm, I'm pretty hopeful that you will be able to continue the winning streak. You know, it's the same feeling that I had for Chantal when she competed earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And now she's being followed by someone just as uh, 
each, uh, someone being followed just as equally gorgeous. Thank and, you so much. Thank you so much. You know, and, and more, uh, and a well accomplished woman like Thank her. So, uh, actually, I have, I have a lot of more questions to, uh, to ask, but yeah. But, we can do a follow up yeah. interview soon. Yeah, so. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Thank so you. one last question, you know, yes. you will be competing up against so many beautiful women around the world. But why do you think you should be the first title holder from Curacao to win this universe? Um, thank you. I think why I should be Miss Universe is because I've shown resilience, passion, strength, and determination throughout my life. And I did it all in order to gain the life experience, in order to amplify my resume, in order to get this job as Miss Universe. And um, my plans as Miss Universe is to focus so much on women's empowerment. Um, I really want to um, make women's empowerment courses online for the entire world. I'm currently busy here on Curacao, but I want to do it for the entire world, entire universe, rather. And um, I'm so excited and I can't wait to participate to form this universe. But I think those, those things are the most important reasons um, why I want to win this universe. Spoken like a true queen. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Shari and Jenna Shen Shen. Thank you. <laughs> and I have something to say. I have something to say. Wait. Mahal ko kayong Philippines. Oh, <laughs> we love you more, girl. We love you more, girl. Oh my God, I think I should really include you in my list uh, right now in my top picks. Cause, wow, wow, you're just you know even you're just sitting there in your living room talking to me. I can really feel your power within. Thank you. Waiting Thank you so to be unleashed. In a lot, two months from now, I can really feel that Curacao is really coming in strong again for Miss Universe. That we shouldn't take you guys lightly again. Oh, yes, no. with your overall package and substance, no doubt you will be able to continue your country's winning streak in Miss Universe, and hopefully be your country's first Miss Universe title oh, holder. Oh my God, that's the goal. <laughs> yes, yes, claim it as early as that. Yes to Bye. make it happen. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, CB, um, Miss you. Universe Curious Organization for making this interview possible. I really had a blast getting to yes. know you, Miss Shari. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. And maybe we'll see each other in Israel. You never know. I know. I know. Can someone sponsor me to go there? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was just wondering, have you um, done any research about ALAT? Um, not yet. I saw a few images. I looked up, uh, I looked it up yes, travels a lot on Instagram. I saw beautiful images, but I haven't looked it up quite yet. I know that it's a beautiful place for tourists to go, um, but I'm really interested in the culture of Israel. It's so interesting. You know, yeah. um, Jerusalem, all... really interesting. There's no direct flight to Eilat coming from Tel Aviv, so... Um, once you go there, yeah. you will take your flight to Tel Aviv. From Tel Aviv, you will, you will have to have, you will have to ride a bus, bus. or train for five hours by okay. land yeah. in order for you to get to Eilat. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm not the one going, but I'm already doing a lot of research. I'm still thinking whether I should go or not. If it's worth the expenses, if it's worth the trip, if it's all going to be worth it. But yeah, <laughs> I'm already giving it. you a heads up. It will be worth it. I really hope For that. sure, but it's so expensive. Apart from COVID restrictions, that's what's it's really, really you know, making it scared. COVID restrictions, we don't know how it's going to be placed. If we're going to see you guys, if we were able to see you guys. So it's, it's tough. Um, yes. I don't know how the organization is going to handle it. I'm excited to see it. Yes, no doubt. Me too. Anyway, it's really getting late. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miss Shari, for making Thank this, you. for gracing this interview. No words. Thank you so much. And good luck and God bless on your upcoming Miss Universe journey. I will now start rooting for you as well. <laughs> Thank oh. you so much. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you so much and have a great night over you there. Too. Have a great day. Goodbye. Virtual hugs and kisses all the way here yes. from Manila. <laughs> Goodbye. Take, take care.